All right, guys, today we are reviewing the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. Now, this is the two-wheel drive version, so this version is the one that starts at 71,990. It's also the most popular and most sold out. So the first three lots of allocation are actually already sold out for Hyundai Australia. Uh, however, this is a fantastic car and we really are excited to show you what this car is about and why there's such a demand for this full electric um, car of the future. It looks funky and groovy as you can tell, so that's not where it stops. So starting at the front, we don't have a, a petrol or a diesel engine like a traditional car in this Hyundai. Uh, we actually do have a full electric engine uh, or electric motor, I should say, and electric battery. Um, so what that means is you do get additional storage space in the front where that would sit. Uh, the car itself has 160 kilowatts worth of power, 350 newton meters of torque uh, and a 72.6 kilowatt hour battery, which means you're good for about 450 k's worth of driving around town on the highway and everywhere in between. Moving on to the styling, this is quite a polarizing design, but it is fantastic and I love it. And the reason for that is that it looks so different to most cars on the road, as well as every other electric car. It doesn't follow that same design language that basically everyone else is trying to re um, replicate, um, which means that it just looks like a funky retro car rather than a electric car. Um, you have these cube headlights that are straight out of Knight Rider from 70s and 80s, if anyone remembers. Uh, you do have front parking sensors as standard. You have this light bar that sits across the front um, plastic section here, uh, with, which has little slits uh, that let the light through. Uh, this comes on as a daytime running light, as well as at, during um, nighttime operations, but it's not too bright. It's just more of a, a subtle uh, highlight. Indicators are built into it and are also in that LED cubed type fashion. Um, and LED headlights for high beam and low beam are standard on this car. Five star ANCAP safety rated, um, and it does come with Hyundai's uh, warranty, which we'll put in the comments, but five years unlimited kilometer warranty. Um, and the battery itself is covered by 160,000 kilometers and eight years worth of warranty. All right, so another standout feature with the Ionic 5 is that you do get these massive 20 inch alloy wheels. Uh, they are aerodynamically designed and tuned so that you will get a lot more efficiency uh, both with braking and with just the aerodynamic flow over the, the whole wheel. They also stand out from a lot of the other EVs on the market because a lot of other EVs have gone with the option of a smaller uh, rim size and a larger tire with a lower rolling resistance uh, in order to try to get that extra distance out of the battery from a charge level. Uh, Hyundai has just gone to go, let's have a look at what tire will actually look cool in this car rather than uh, what's the most aerodynamically functional uh, tire. So makes it stand out, makes it look really nice and makes it look different. So moving on to the inside, handles are actually recessed back into the body panel and just pop out when you go to open the door. When you close the door, they fold flat straight into the uh, bodywork of the car as well. But let's take a look inside the car. Before we go inside the car, let's check out the side of the door. Door materials on each of the doors are super soft touch materials. They are nice, they are refined. Uh, because this car does have the ivory interior, um, they will get dirty. So unless you're a clean person, just be mindful that you will probably have to clean it a little bit more frequently. If you've got kids, you've got no chance. Um, but the bigger part to it is it looks really nice because it is different. So once you get inside the car, that white interior gives it a nice airy vibe to the car. Um, you have this nice light that runs along here then reflects up onto that surface. So if you have, for example, um, a blue light uh, set as your ambient light, it will reflect blue. Down near the speaker, you do have a um, Bose surround sound system as standard in the car, but that speaker grill also has a ring light around the edge. That ring light will turn either blue, green or uh, red, uh, depending on which driver mode you have. So if you've got sports mode, it will go red. If you've got normal mode, it will go blue. Uh, and if you go into eco mode, it will go green. Um, so keep an eye out for that. All your window controls, they're all traditional, nothing different. This isn't a weird fancy car, it's just an, another car, but with an electric motor. Uh, driver's seat, you do have two positions for your memory. So if you share this car with a uh, partner or with just anyone else, you can set your memory positions here for that seat. Uh, and with bottles, if you like to drink water or, and like to have bigger bottles, 
uh, you will have plenty of space to store them just here. So you're not gonna be without space uh, in this car. So real good job by Hyundai. Moving on to the interior, the steering wheel is height adjustable and reach adjustable. Simply let the release down and you can pull it, move it backwards and forwards, do whatever you need to do to get it into the seat position that you want. Uh, as well as the front seat has a range of adjustments. So you'll be able to move yourself backwards and forwards, up and down, move the backrest um, and everything else there. The only thing it doesn't have is a built-in massage function, which is the only disappointing thing. Uh, and it's not really expected, but it would have been really, really nice. Um, heated and air-conditioned seats are part of it, which we'll go through in a second. Um, but one of the other things that you'll notice is really different with the way that this is set up, because there's no central controls here for shifting, all the shifting is actually done with this dial here. So this will do your park, your neutral, drive and reverse. The one thing that I've uh, noticed is it's a little bit counterintuitive in that reverse is actually at the back. So you've got to tilt the, the lever backwards uh, to put it in reverse or twist it forwards to go into drive. It makes sense if you're thinking about the direction in which the car goes, but if you are thinking about how a traditional shifter works, a traditional shifter will have reverse at the top and drive down the bottom. Um, so it's just one of those ones you'll probably take all of maybe you know, the first couple of goes to just not have to think about where you're gonna position it. Um, luckily, it do does come up on the screen and tell you if it's in reverse. Plus, if the reverse camera is not on, you know you're not in reverse. Um, but it's just one of those quirks that I thought was a little bit odd. It's definitely not gonna stop me buying one if I was looking at buying one and it shouldn't stop you buying one either. Um, outside of that, auto headlights, auto high beam, auto everything, um, lane departure alert, lane keep assist, all standard. Autonomous emergency braking is standard as well. So as you're driving along, if you have your cruise control set or without the cruise control, if a car jumps in front and goes to hit the brakes, uh, it w uh, sorry, and, and cuts you off uh, in a distance where you're about to hit the car, I should say, um, the car will automatically apply the brakes for you to try to save itself. Um, sure, they'll sell it to you as if it's trying to save you, but let's be honest, it's just trying to save itself. Um, moving on to the digital side of it. As you can see, there is a massive amount of screens in here. They're super clear, they're super bright. Uh, and what's really um, quirky, I guess, is they went for a full square screen in the middle, even though the steering wheel cuts off the corners. So they probably should have gone a curved screen for that central display. The middle display, we'll talk about that in a sec, but really nice and beautiful. Electronic handbrake is just here. So once your foot's on the brake, you can push that or push it the other way to release it, as well as all your controls to automatically open and close the rear tailgate as well is all in there. Moving on to the inside, you get this beautiful, big, responsive color touch display. Now this touch display does a number of different things. And because satellite navigation is built into it, even in the EV menu, it will actually tell you the distance between where you currently are and your closest EV charger. So at the moment, I'm 3.3 kilometers from the University of Queensland Car Park One charger. Um, now, it's always worth getting either an app like ChargeFox or PlugShare, just to double check that those chargers are online at the time that you're gonna use them, because this doesn't check that for you. Um, due to rec the recent flooding that we've had here in Queensland, some of those are active and some of those are not. Um, but it will tell you that on here. It is worth noting that the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto do require a cable to operate, so it is wired. Um, it's not the wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that other cars have at this price point. Moving on to the central screen, it is bright and super responsive uh, on here. In the EV screen, you will get all the information around your car, how much driving distance you have with the air conditioning on, how much driving distance with the air conditioning off, as well as the closest distance to your charging station. So we're 3.3 kilometers away from the nearest one. Uh, you do have the EV charge transfer. Now what this button here is, it's a little bit different to other EVs. Uh, it will allow you to actually change, um, sorry, ch charge another car or another device uh, from the main charge here. So if you press that, you can actually do this here um, on that screen there and you've got all your climate control buttons and everything up the top here. Moving back to here, you have your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto controls. So super responsive screen once again. Uh, and, uh, and moving back through here, you then go back to the screen where you will have your cooled and heated seats uh, all through here, um, or ventilated and heated seats, I should say. 
So all these functions are all through here as well as um, the rest of your driver controls for the top. The heated and ventilated seats are for the front two seats. Um, and when you go back into the camera mode, you do have a full 360 degree camera. So it will show you where you're positioned in your parking. And if you wanna even go full tech and have a look at where your car is positioned to everything else, uh, it will allow you to do that too. Moving down to the central controls here. Now these are the all important climate control settings. So if it's su super hot or super cold, you can adjust all of your controls here. Uh, it's dual zone for the left and right hand side, uh, as well as um, being able to be on auto mode. And you also have your stop start button just to the right hand side. Uh, the heating and ventilation, as I mentioned before, is controlled through the screen and it is for the front two seats. So the driver and the passenger will get those um, through here. In the middle, you'll find additional storage up the top here. You do have this floating storage central location here. Perfect if you've got a handbag, bag, or just anything really, a Macca's bag. Uh, you do have fast charge USB ports up the top here. Uh, and down the bottom, you also have a wireless charging pad for your phone, which is just activated by simply grabbing your phone, sliding it and dropping it into that spot there and some more cup holders. Moving into the back seat, you do have plenty of space uh, for headroom and width and legroom, except in the middle. For whatever reason, they've pushed this tunnel the whole way back, which means if you're in the middle, you're trying to sit here, you're kind of restricted of where you're gonna be. It's gonna be a little bit awkward um, for your seats. So it could have been designed a little bit better if I'm being honest, um, because there's so much space in front of this. So this could have been moved about that much forward and you would have had a little bit more space. That being said, it's still functional. It has fast charge uh, USB ports in the back, a little bit of storage down the bottom. Uh, and moving into the seating side of things, you do have ISOFIX seats on the outer two seats. Um, as mentioned, legroom and headroom, uh, when you're actually seated behind each of the seats on the outer seats, is going to be plentiful. You have no issue there. Um, and air conditioning vents on the doors uh, mean that you have air in the right space uh, rather than just cooling the back of your knees. Uh, or if you're in this car, if the air conditioning vents were in the back here, you'd be cooling your crutch, which is probably why they put them on the doors. Massive panoramic roof uh, on, on all Ionic 5 models. Uh, it looks fantastic and is just crisp and clear. Um, definitely one of the highlight features of this car. Um, and outside of that, with the seats, you can actually adjust them. So if you wanna move this seat backwards and forwards, so you can go forwards the whole range. So if you wanna set the seat back, lay back and enjoy the view outside your panoramic roof, you're good to go. In the rear, you'll find plenty of space for all your bags, um, suitcases, strollers, prams, everything. They're gonna fit in here comfortably. This rear sh shade is actually removable, so you can pull it out completely should you wish, or you can even move it to the forward position to give you a bit more access space to everything else. And up here, you have everything, including storage for your charging cables as well as your tire mobility kit. Um, it has a tire mobility kit because it doesn't actually have a spare wheel, uh, possibly to save space, and because it's quite a large spare wheel, so it'd take up a lot of uh, room, which would also mean it would add extra weight, which on an electric car, the less weight it is in the car, the more distance you're gonna get out of each charge. Uh, but really usable back space. Once the seats fold flat, you get a tremendous amount of space in the rear. Um, and it's an electric tailgate that goes up and down and can be programmed to whatever height um, clearance you need from a ceiling point. So there you have it guys. That's what I think about the Ionic 5 uh, in the rear wheel drive from Hyundai. We are reviewing the, the all wheel drive dual motor in a couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for that view. Uh, and obviously, as always, the full re length review will be on our website with all the details around servicing um, and any other um, things that we've picked up while we've had the car. We've done about, um, now on this car, about 1500Ks worth of testing. And to be honest, I really like the car and I think it's definitely worth consideration if you are looking for an electric car. And I can't forget to point out that these little cube lights are possibly the coolest design uh, of any car on the market. So definitely have a look at the Ionic 5. It's worth considering.